Picture this. You're cruising down the highway on a sunny day, music on, windows down, everything feels perfect, until suddenly, a warning light flashes on your dashboard. Smoke starts creeping out from under the hood, and you're forced to pull over. Sounds like a nightmare, right? Well, the hero that usually saves you from this situation is something most people don't think twice about, the radiator. Today, we're diving into how car radiators work. They might not be the flashiest part of your car, but they're absolutely essential in keeping your engine alive and running. Right here on History of Simple Things. To understand why we even need radiators, let's start with the engine itself. A car engine is basically a controlled explosion factory. Inside, thousands of tiny fuel air explosions happen every minute. These explosions move pistons up and down, which turns into the power that drives your wheels. But here's the catch. Explosions generate heat. Lots of it. In fact, only about a third of the energy from burning fuel goes into moving your car. The rest becomes heat. Without some way to manage all that heat, the metal parts of the engine would expand, warp, or even weld themselves together. That's game over for your car. So, engines need a cooling system, and that's where the radiator steps in. Think of the radiator as the main star in a larger supporting cast known as the cooling system. Here's how the loop works. Coolant, a mix of water and antifreeze, circulates through the engine. As it moves, it picks up the excess heat from those fiery explosions. Then, it travels to the radiator, where the magic happens. The heat is transferred from the coolant into the air, leaving the coolant cooled down and ready for another lap through the engine. This continuous loop is what keeps your engine at the sweet spot, warm enough to run efficiently but not so hot that it self-destructs. So, what is the radiator really? Imagine a giant metal grid at the front of your car, usually tucked just behind the grill. It's made up of thin tubes that carry the hot coolant. Around those tubes are lots of tiny metal fins, kind of like the teeth of a comb. Why so many fins? Surface area. The more metal surface you have, the more heat can escape. When air flows over those fins, either from you driving forward or from a fan blowing, it sucks the heat out of the coolant inside the tubes. The design hasn't changed much over the decades because it's simple and effective. More airflow equals better cooling, and more fins and tubes equal faster heat transfer. We can't talk radiators without mentioning coolant. Many people think it's just water in there, but plain water isn't ideal. Water alone can freeze in cold weather, boil at high temperatures, and cause rust inside the engine. That's why we use a blend of water and antifreeze, usually ethylene glycol. This mixture lowers the freezing point, raises the boiling point, and adds corrosion inhibitors. In other words, it keeps the liquid stable no matter what season you're in, and it prevents your engine from slowly rusting away. Another unsung hero in this system is the thermostat. It's basically a small valve that decides whether coolant goes through the radiator or not. When you start your car cold, the thermostat stays closed, keeping coolant inside the engine so it can warm up quickly. Once the engine reaches the ideal operating temperature, usually around 195 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermostat opens. That's when coolant is allowed to flow through the radiator for cooling. Without a thermostat, your car would either take forever to heat up or it would run too cold, both of which reduce efficiency and increase wear on parts. Here's the thing, radiators rely on airflow to shed heat. When you're cruising on the highway, plenty of air passes through the grill, 
No problem. But what about when you're stuck in traffic on a hot day? That's when cooling fans kick in. These electric fans pull air through the radiator when the car itself isn't moving fast enough to do the job. Some cars even use multiple fans or variable speed fans to keep things just right. Now, this part might surprise you. The radiator isn't just a passive metal box. It's a pressurized system. And the key player here is the radiator cap. The cap isn't just a lid, it's a pressure valve. By keeping the coolant under pressure, the boiling point of the liquid is raised. Normally, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but under pressure, the coolant can handle much higher temps before turning to steam. If the pressure ever gets too high, the cap releases some coolant into an overflow tank, preventing damage. Later, when things cool down, the coolant is sucked back in. It's like a little breathing system for your radiator. Now that you know how it all works, how do you know if your radiator is failing? Common signs include the temperature gauge creeping higher than normal, coolant leaks under your car, or steam escaping from under the hood. Radiators don't need daily attention, but ignoring them completely can be risky. Flushing the coolant every few years keeps the system free of buildup. Inspecting hoses for cracks and leaks can save you from a roadside disaster. And never underestimate the radiator cap. Replacing a worn cap is one of the cheapest fixes for overheating issues. Think of it like this. Your radiator is the bodyguard of your engine. Take care of it, and it'll take care of you. At the end of the day, radiators are easy to overlook because they don't make your car faster, louder, or shinier. But without them, your engine would be toast within minutes. They quietly work in the background, balancing temperatures, protecting delicate parts, and making sure you get to your destination safely. So, the next time you pop the hood and see that grid of metal fins staring back at you, you'll know it's not just a piece of hardware, it's the reason your car is still running smoothly. Engines may get the glory, but radiators deserve the respect. From the clever design of the fins and tubes, to the chemistry of the coolant, to the tiny thermostat making split-second decisions, it's a perfect example of engineering teamwork. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.